Sam, very good morning to you. Can we end the week with some slightly better news from South Africa around hospitalizations? How much can we tell from this data? Yes, good morning, Anna. I mean, I, you can't beat that, that 91% reduction in the number of hospitalizations in this wave is fantastic. Oh, I have been saying all along that we need to wait enough weeks for the data to build, and I think we're getting there. Um, it would be surprising if the number suddenly changes next week, maybe it goes up a little bit or doesn't, but, but I think this is, this is pretty good indication that if you have a demographic and immunity background that looks like South Africa, then you might be in better shape than if you don't. And I think you, I'm going to actually just spending some time looking at these numbers uh, for the rest of the mm. uh, uh, developed world to see what it looks like. OK, so yes, you have cautioned us in the past about not reading too much into data from other locales because, of course, of different age profiles, different demographic pictures, different history of virus variants. The South African story, of course, we know they, they had a different variant there for a while that, that, uh, that seemed to take off and different vaccination levels and all those important to, to mention. I also wonder when we're talking about percentages of infections that end up in hospital, you're relying on on a sort of consistent approach to testing and you're relying on an ability to, to, to compare the current situation with previous waves, which we'd, we'd hope you can do, but I guess there might be some uncertainty there. Yes, I mean, in this data, as it's being gathered, there's no way to triage a lot of that and study it and analyse it. But frankly, even if it turns out to be 50% less and not 91% less, it's mm. still great. But yes. whatever sh shape it turns out to be, once you've had the detail, um, I, th I think this is looking good. They're also saying, going on to say the ventilation need is lower than in earlier waves. So let's cling to this this Friday, Sam. Um, what about the spread of Omicron then? And I mean, certainly in the United States, there's there's talk we've heard from President Biden talking about it's going to be a tough time for the unvaccinated, even if, if Omicron, and let's hope it does, turn out to be less severe. There are certain unvaccinated populations who will still have to be very concerned about the Delta wave this winter. Yeah, oh, sure. Delta wave, Omicron wave, COVID wave, basically. That's what you, you can't you can't take that away. And again, Anna, let's not let's not make this an Omicron change in terms of its lack of severity, which could be. But let's let's make sure that we're clear that it's probably and a lot of it is to do with existing immunity. So when you look at the data for the United States, for instance, that I have here just uh, putting together, it is the least immune if you simply take the number of infections and number of vaccinations. Of course, there's lots of other detail that we need to think about. But that's the problem that the US is facing, not just low vaccination. It also didn't have a very, um, uh, very big wave of at least officially recorded case counts. So lots mm. of things to think through, but vaccination clearly is where they're lagging.